What's up, everyone? Welcome to the first episode of Monsterology 101, a series where I give a lesson about a monster I've encountered throughout my multiverse traveling that may or may not be in D&D or Pathfinder systems. Yes, this is a series about D&D monsters and giving you ideas on how to use them. Anyways, today's topic is a classic monster and a menace to adventurers everywhere, but mostly in caves. The Umber Hulk. I'll say it again. The Umber Hulk. Umber Hulks have a long and interesting history, but we'll be going with the most modern and common form of Umber Hulk. So, Umber Hulks, scientific name currently pending, appear to be huge bipedal arthropods with some scholars calling it a grisly cross between a gorilla and an insect. I don't agree with that for the modern Umber Hulk, as it's definitely more bug than ape, though it may look like a bug. Make no mistake, it is indeed a monster, classified as a monstrosity. Being a monster, I've worked with and studied a few, though not many, since they're very solitary and reclusive, like gamers, sticking to their caves and never going outside. Umber hulks live underground, in cave systems, and sometimes in large, dark, abandoned dungeons and castles. They need dark and rocky places to burrow into and ambush unsuspecting prey. A typical Umber Hulk's diet consists of onkegs, ankegs, big bugs, purple worm larvae and corpses, though not adult purple worms, as they are far too challenging for Umber Hulks and subterranean humanoids, such as dwarves and drow. In fact, humanoids are its favored meal. While their homes usually have lichen and fungi, they themselves don't eat it, instead using it to attract larger insects, which it then eats. While they are solitary creatures, they're still highly intelligent and actually have their own language, which would mainly be used for communicating with mates and rivals during breeding season. No, we won't cover mating. You sick fuck. It would break TOS. Alright, it's time for my favorite part of the lecture. The part where I make stuff up. Anatomy and abilities. Where I explain how the monsters do what they do. Let's start with the Umberhulk's exoskeleton. The Umberhulk's thick chitin exoskeleton is said to be harder than steel. And yeah, it kinda is comparable to plate armor. This exceptional toughness is due to a similar structure in the exoskeleton of the diabolical ironclad beetle, which can withstand insane amounts of forces. The beetle can use its specially designed exoskeleton with many interlocking sutures and its armor-like elytra to withstand 39,000 times its own body weight and endure extreme crushing forces. The Umber Hulk uses the same ridiculous toughness to allow for stronger muscles and to withstand cave-ins, both of which are needed when it's burrowing through solid rock. The second main anatomical feature we'll be covering is the Umber Hulk's eyes. So at first glance, you'll notice they seem to have a basic compound eye, but for some reason, it has a strange separation in it, which means it's two separate structures. These eyes up here are the simple eyes as found on spiders and such, used to detect size and shape of objects. The combination of these eyes gives it superb dark vision. So moving on to the compound eyes, you'll see its separation goes fully through. Now, all this stuff, all these words, they're just parts of the basic compound eye. No big deal. They just help it see. But this is what we care about. The mana gland. This gland concentrates the body's mana reserves behind the eye, and when needed, releases through said eye and the space between it, activating the Umberhulk's confusing gaze ability, which interferes with the prey's brain. The final anatomical feature for today's lesson are these hair-like structures found all over the thick chitin of the Umberhulk. These hairs are used for sensing vibrations to the ground while burrowing allowing it to navigate even while underground, more easily detecting prey or predators. I actually didn't make this part up, that's in the book. 
actually in the monster manual. Currently there are three known variants of Umber Hulks. Abyssal Umber Hulks have adapted to the brutal chaos of the Abyss, gaining resistances to fire, lightning, and poison. They're similar in every other way though, as Umber Hulks are already tough enough to deal with the Abyss. Truly hard Umber Hulks are older members of the species that managed to outlive the natural 75 year lifespan of Umber Hulks. Over this time, they've grown at least twice as large, have become wiser in their years of experience, and honed their mana into a more powerful, confusing gaze. These monsters occupy deeper caves and may actively hunt adult purple worms. Umber Ravagers are a smaller subspecies, more likely to occupy closer to the surface. These are the only subspecies that will actively work in groups, likely due to reduced size and powers. Alright, now for the part you've all been waiting for. How do we even use these things in D&D? Well, before we figure that out, we have to look at the stat block. Yep, those are some numbers and letters. So we've covered just about everything we need to know about the Umber Hulk before we can use it to its best. But the most important thing is right here. That's right, it has an intelligence of nine. This is huge. In a world and system where the most common dump stat is intelligence, this means the Umber Hulk is more intelligent than most player characters, which justifies the use of effective strategies. So here's some good scenarios for using this monster in your games that can really challenge your players. Scenario 1. Using our Umber Hulk's huge brain and various senses. It tunnels under the party, seeking out either the wizard or cleric. Once it's found them, it bursts from the ground beneath them and attacks the unfortunate player, either putting them in a very vulnerable position or outright knocking them out. This can challenge your players by forcing them to quickly take the pressure off the guy who controls the battlefield or the guy who keeps them alive longer. Without those two guys, it's just a slugfest that the giant hard as steel bug monster is likely to win. If the party manages to take the pressure off for long enough, then they can just surround and wail on it until it's dead. Either way, a fun and dangerous encounter. Scenario 2. So the second scenario is if you want to be really mean, or if you have a very capable and experienced group of players. You're in a tight cave tunnel, no more than 10 feet wide. The two beefiest characters go in front to protect from any monsters deeper in the cave while the squishies are in the back. When suddenly, from behind the party, burst an Umber Hulk from underground. Since it's targeting the back and most likely squishiest characters, you'll challenge your player's abilities to shuffle their positions in tight spaces, and their ability to not take opportunity attacks. This method is brutal and will most likely down several party members. Scenario 3. Okay, so this one is my favorite. Deep in a cave, the party spots an open chamber with nothing but a strange rock in the middle and a narrow tunnel on the other side. As the party approaches the rock, arms spring up and break the surrounding rock floor, revealing a pitfall trap. It turns out the strange rock was an umber hulk, waiting for a curious humanoid to become its next meal. And the tunnel on the other side? That's what the Umber Hulk burrowed out of after making the trap, then covering the hole. So if the players explore that, at the end, there's a monster waiting to drop onto them. Meaning there's two ways to trigger this trap. This scenario is really cool because it shows the cleverness it deserves as a monster and turns the encounter from a standard fight into a really cool living, breathing trap, which we need more of in D&D. 
Going back to the Umber Hulk's anatomy, we can see some weaknesses and strengths that could be added to your games. If you'd like to make the creature more difficult, give it resistance to bludgeoning, as its specialized exoskeleton can effectively withstand those crushing forces. If you want to give it weaknesses, those eyes aren't armored, and if they're damaged enough, it will lose both its sight and confusing gaze ability. And those hairs it uses for tremor sense? If you engulf the Umberhulk in flame or acid, you damage or destroy the hairs, getting rid of its ability to sense vibrations. This concludes our first lesson of Monsterology 101. I hope you learned a lot and choose to use some of this in your games. I hope to do more of these in the future, so if you want to see more, like and subscribe!